define mental health uh, in a lot of different ways and I think each person defines it differently according to who they are. Everyone goes through some kind of mental health stress, uh, but then there are folks who struggle with more, I think, serious mental health conditions like depression, anxiety, some of our delusional disorders. Uh, for me, uh, I think it's about overall well-being. Hi, uh, my name's Sambul Siddiqui. I'm the mayor of Cambridge. I'm serving my second term. Yeah, you know, I think there's a more of a focus on adolescent uh, health. I think there are definitely more challenges to overall uh, mental health. Uh, and we've seen with the pandemic, uh, particularly uh, that, you know, our young people are in a crisis. In terms of adolescent mental health, um, it's, a, it's a really critical developmental period. And so adolescents sometimes can be more prone to stressors and, and, to, and sometimes it's the time of first onset of, of mental health diagnoses. So um, adolescence is always really a, a critical time to get support in place. Sometimes you really can't do things alone. And I think when I was growing up, you know, we didn't, I don't really don't remember it being talked about as much. And I think um, I'm glad that at least students these days that is in the vocabulary. You know, mental health issues have been around forever, right? Um, but I think pressure that young people are under now, particularly with social media, I mean, I think, you know, I don't think we can underestimate uh, enough the the way that, the way social media has kind of changed everything. Sure, so my name is Mark McGovern. I'm a Cambridge City Councilor. I'm serving my fifth term on the council. I served one term as mayor, one term as vice mayor. Uh, I'm also a licensed independent clinical social worker who has worked uh, for 28 years with children and families, not just in Cambridge, but around Massachusetts those comment sections and chat rooms are a cesspool for people, right? And all of that, like all that pressure, all that anxiety, all that just sort of nonstop stimulation that can be really negative. I think social media has created the ability for us to almost always be connected to, to people and not having that, that separation, I think can really lend itself to um, people becoming really, uh, young people becoming really hyper-focused on the things that they don't have and comparing themselves to, to others. It's hugely impacting the mental health of young people today. And, you know, even, even the stuff that's not negative, that instant, like, you know, the instant gratification. But it has a way now of seeping into our consciousness that you know, it starts to define who we think we are and how valuable we think we are. And that's obviously more pronounced for young people because of brain development, because they've grown up in this in a different way. But for young people, it's, it becomes their world. And, you know, you don't just go to the park and throw the football around anymore. You have to be in a program and your parent has to drive you there. And you have to, you know, and, and all of that just creates this sort of, it's just this nonstop pressure, this nonstop, like, always being on the go, always getting this stimulation. And, you know, that, that can cause mental health issues. That can cause depression and anxiety and trauma. And um, there's just so much stimulation now compared to, you know, 1983 when I was a freshman. From what I've been hearing from our young people is that they don't know where to go. My culture and my background, my parents, I don't think we're ever comfortable talking about it. And so I know that there's uh, an issue of just, while it's being talked about, how do you talk about it? How do you get help? Uh, and not knowing where to go. We do support a lot of programs in, in, the, in the city, a lot of nonprofits, the Cambridge Health Alliance. Um, you know, they obviously provide, uh, you know, a host of services. And our police department, we have a whole social justice, um, mental health sort of department. They're there to, you know, lend support to families, lend support to adolescents. Um, around mental health issues. The Clinical Support Unit was founded uh, in 2018. And that's when the Cambridge Police founded the Family and Social Justice Section. Um, 
Uh, my name is Dr. Jamie Barrett. I'm a clinical psychologist. I'm the director of the clinical support unit at Cambridge Police, and I'm also an assistant professor of psychology uh, at the Harvard Medical School. Clinical support is pretty unique in that we're a unit of non-sworn professionals, so we're not police officers, we're civilians. Now, I'm a psychologist, there's two social workers here, and there's a case manager. And our job in the city is really to focus on our vulnerable populations who are most at risk for further involvement in the criminal justice system. Working in the police department, we know adolescents, it's, it's a time of risk where they're more likely to engage in potentially delinquent behaviors. And that's due to brain development and the general kind of uh, risk-taking uh, behavior that comes with adolescence and a desire to kind of test boundaries. Folks who struggle with mental illness are you know, up to five to seven times more likely to get more deeply involved in the criminal justice system. Our goal is to connect folks with the supports and services in the city of Cambridge and to leverage those supports and services um, so that people are getting help instead of just getting processed into court or could be uh, involving more significant charges. So we do that through a lot of diversion. When we can divert, when someone's uh, committed an offense where they could be charged with a crime, we use our resources to try to divert them away. We have something called the Safety Net Program in Cambridge through the police department. It really creates these wraparound services that include mental health support, support for the families, you know, support for the parents, support for the child, after school programs, things like that. So the Cambridge Safety Net Collaborative was founded in about 2008. We are a collaborative. So what we want to do is identify those children and families most at need for support who may be at risk for delinquency and really come together as partners and put into place the supports and services that are going to help those young people. And that we're not criminalizing normal adolescent behavior, but instead looking to leverage whatever put that young person in contact with police in the first place and get them the help and leverage the supports of the city so that that problematic behavior doesn't continue. Uh, since that program started, um, actually, juvenile uh, crime in Cambridge has been cut by over 60 percent. So it, we're definitely diverting kids, you know, from the criminal justice system more into a mental health system. The, the need for mental health services has increased dramatically because of COVID, but the pe number of people able to provide those services has decreased. Especially mental health professionals who are of color. I think diversity is really important because yeah, I always say you can't be what you can't see. There's that aspect of it, you know, just seeing people who are doing this work is really important. And then the sense of comfort. So I think um, it's really important for our young people who come from really diverse backgrounds to be able to have people that they, who understand their background. But, you know, the other part of it is, is mental health support can happen in a lot of different ways by a lot of different people. But we also have to make sure that we're training our teachers, our custodians, our clerks, our administrators, you know, in our schools, um, librarians, um, on how to be supportive and how to identify certain signs um, of mental health issues because you don't know who that child is necessarily connected to. That child may have a really, I mean, I when I was in elementary school, I was really close to the custodian. He was a great guy, he knew my family, he was somebody that, you know, I would talk to. Now that, you know, someone might not think, oh, you know, well, he's a custodian, what do we need to train him in mental health services for? But he may have relationships with kids and he needs to, you know, to be able to know how to talk to kids and support kids too. I've really just been working to uh, build the program out and to um, create something that um, is a reflection of what is needed in the community. Uh, my name is Marie Matthew. I am a licensed clinical social worker. I um, currently work as the Cambridge Public Library's library social worker. I've been in the role for a little over a year and a half. It's a newer niche in social work in general. And so library patrons are able to uh, work with um, myself or a member of our social work team. 
we can help people from um, things like applying for different uh, benefits like social security benefits or if they're looking for um, health insurance um, or if they have food um, insecurity connecting them to the to resources and then we also have quite a bit of like families who will come in or parents who come in and say you know I've noticed that my child has been really drawn lately or really down or they're having a really hard time this school year um, and so trying to figure out is it like a, a learning challenge or is it an emotional um, challenge and so uh, really just kind of listening and, and talking through those things with with parents um, around you know what what their adolescents um, may have going on and then making sure that they they know what what the resources are that are available to them in most other spaces in order to connect to a provider you have to meet a certain level of criteria or you have to be on you know a specific caseload or you have to be working with um with this particular institution in order to be connected to you know um providers the cool thing about this role is that there are no access barriers, right? Um, our goal is to ensure that, you know, there's equitable access to the services. Uh, our patrons are, are so diverse, and so we get to work with people with all kinds of needs. Um, and so I think that's the really cool part about having social workers in, in a library setting. One of the things I fought for on school committee and finally has come to come to be is, is that we have social workers in every Cambridge public school. Um, we have an integrated uh, health clinic within Cambridge Ridge and Latin uh, called the Teen Health Center where we actually have Cambridge Health Alliance um, uh, mental health professionals on site. Services can be uh, sought out directly at that clinic. They don't have to cross the city to go to a clinic. They can get it on a free period or during lunch right there within the building. I attended Cambridge Ridge and Latin, the one public high school uh, in the city um, from 1983 to 1987. And it was bigger then, um, not the building, but we had over 3,000 students and now we're roughly around 2,000 students. The Teen Health Center was just coming into existence. There really wasn't a lot of mental health support at the high school at the time that, that, I, that I knew of. Um, you know, we had guidance counselors, but we weren't really social workers. And sometimes it's just about, I need someone that I can trust and talk to confidenti confidentially that I know, you know, is going to keep my information safe, is going to keep my information private, and just allow me to kind of, you know, get that out. I mean, I, I, think, I think everybody should be in therapy, you know, because where do you have an hour where it's all about you? Uh, I'm glad to see that we're, you know, beefing up these services in our schools because kids need that too, especially now. Uh, we also have a program called Bright. It's a bridge for resilient youth in transition. There are numbers of students who've had to leave school uh, due to uh, mental illness, and so this supportive program um, is there to bring them back in uh, to the school environment after that. Just, uh, you know, a very supportive environment with access to um, various resources, counseling, um, specialized classrooms, uh, different experts, and we have that in the high school. We also just invested in doing that at the middle school level, so we're expanding that. And so um, I think young people should be aware of crisis uh, hotlines and being able to utilize uh, supports that way. Yeah, the 988 hotline is a, really an alternative uh, hotline you know, you're, you have anxiety, you're not sleeping, you have, uh, you know, you may have had a death of someone in your family, you need someone to talk to. There's all these different scenarios where uh, you can call 988 and get connected to a, uh, a counselor and resources. For, for me, it's really important that folks know that there is this other avenue and that there is this other place that they can call if I don't feel like I'm in imminent danger, but I also don't feel okay. We may be doing things um, thinking that this is what young people need, but not necessarily giving them a voice to be able to express what, what their needs are. 
And I think that's sometimes what, what ends up being missing because it's one thing to create it, but then it's another thing to um, not have it utilized. And so making sure that they have a seat at the table and their voices are, are being heard. In terms of mental health, there's always room to grow, right? And we're, we're always looking to, I think, broaden our partnerships and you know try to fill the gaps we need to be responsive to the shifting needs of our community. And there's, there's always room to grow our capacity and, and be more effective in the work that we do. I think that we're doing a much better job now than in the past in destigmatizing mental health. But we have a long, long way uh, to go. Everybody has stressors and everybody could benefit from having someone to talk to. We have to really do a much better job uh, in seeing mental health in the same way as we see physical health. Things that have worked well in our system, I think we should be sharing that information. And then I would just, lastly, I would just say to our fellow, my fellow elected officials, both at sort of the municipal level, at the state level and the federal level, um, the men mental health needs more support, needs more money. Uh, it needs more support on a whole bunch of different levels, um, and uh, we really need to we really need to start treating it with the seriousness that it deserves.